There are probably more imps on the arena ladder now than actual players thanks to the rise of Demo Warlock, and Unholy DKs might actually be in contention for the best melee spec. Today we'll update you on the 925 meta in the final weeks of Season 3. And just a reminder, Skillcap.com offers a rating gain guarantee while actively using our website. Visit the link below for a discount code and start your PvP journey today. Let's kick things off with Melee, where we have moved things around since our last update. The biggest change here is moving Unholy DKs all the way up to the S tier. It's clear now that DK Demo is probably one of the most dominant ladder comps. It has really proven to be a bane for healers, as the combined healing reduction from both these classes makes for a grueling experience on defense. That's on top of the fact that Abomination Limb is proving to be one of the most threatening cooldowns in Shadowlands PvP. But even outside of Demo Warlocks, Unholy DKs are becoming a valuable valuable asset in a wide range of comp archetypes, even doing well with rogues in some sort of cataclysm throwback. And speaking of rogues, we are unfortunately moving assassination down half a tier. It is definitely the weakest out of all three specs, but still pretty good overall. Although it's probably most known as a gimmicky 2v2 ladder boss, there is definitely an opportunity cost of playing it in 3v3, where both sub and outlaw just perform much better in most rosters. One of the biggest reasons Assassination struggles is because it's just a glass cannon without good control options. Outlaw is practically immortal with its disjointed CDs, and sub rogues easily have the most consistent control out of any melee DPS. That brings us to our final tier list change, and that is bumping down both Enhancement Shaman and Feral Druid. Both of these specs got indirectly nerfed in recent hotfixes. Craven Stratagem got nerfed, so Jungle Cleave became worse. Fury Warriors lost some damage, so Turbo lost a little value. Don't get us wrong, these are still high tier comps, but in both cases it's neither the Feral Druid or Enhancement Shaman who is truly carrying the team. And still, these specs seem to have really limited comp options. Enhancement Shaman has a grand total of one meta comp, and Feral Druid has one solid option with a handful of weird alternatives. And for those reasons, we are slotting it down with some of our other high tier melee. And with that, we have a recap of the melee meta for the final weeks of Season 3. Frost DKs and Arms Warriors remain a bit tricky. These specs really aren't that bad, but face a similar problem to Fury Warriors in Seasons 1 and 2. The fact that their alternatives are just so much better. So once again, that just presents an opportunity cost. Why play Frost or Arms when you could simply play Unholy or Fury? You might be asking why Rhett is still A+, as Feral and Enhance move down, and that is simply due to the consistency of Rhett Warrior. This comp continues to be one of the biggest gatekeepers at all rating brackets and is incredibly popular on the ladder. Now it's time to move on to ranged, and this is where things get a bit confusing, but let's start off with some corrections. We might have overvalued both Affliction and Shadow Priest in our last update. With 925 hotfixes, it seemed like Blizzard was wanting to shift the meta in a direction with less cleaves and more dots. More dots! Come on, more dots! Okay, stop dots! But this hasn't seemed to happen quite yet, if it will ever happen at all. Instead of Shadow Priest and Affliction Warlocks making a heroic rise from the ashes, they have been left in the dust. In this meta, it feels more like ghosts and goblins than it does like WoW PvP. It's possible that the Dot Cleave archetype is completely dead. With every DPS class having some form of self-healing or passive damage mitigation, the power of Dots has dipped off dramatically. Shadow Priest is still a bit awkward outside of this, as it seems to be more of a goalie for its team rather than an offensive powerhouse. If the meta ever slows down, we could see both of these classes return to true form, but until then, they are just overshadowed by other meta giants. Speaking of which, the clear winner in this meta is obviously Demo Warlocks, who haven't just exceeded expectations, they have shattered them. In both 2v2 and 3v3, this spec has quickly become the most dominant ranged DPS, possibly even eclipsing Fire Mage as the best DPS spec in the entire game, depending on who you ask. Really though, giving a 25% MS effect to a tanky wizard has seemed to have some repercussions, and Demo Warlock is arguably the most versatile DPS in WoW Arena. The question isn't what comp is good with Demo Warlock, but instead, is there any comp that is bad with Demo Warlock? And our answer to that second question is likely a resounding no. And with that, we have our ranged DPS update. Now, we mentioned ranged DPS is weird, and that is mostly because of how difficult it is to compare the A and B plus tiers. Most of the pros we consulted thought Mark should be higher, and a few people even mentioned that Elemental Shaman could actually actually be S tier. There's a lot of wild cards here. One thing is certain though, Demo is king and for the sake of our graphics cards, we hope that changes soon. 
Let's finish things off with healers, because they are the nice guys of PvP. We were mostly confident in our pre-hotfix predictions a few weeks ago, but we are making one minor change. One thing that isn't changing though is that Holy Priest is by far the best healer. We fully expect them to be the most dominant healer going into Season 4 unless there are some dramatic nerfs. The more wildcard healers this season are Holy Paladins and Mistweaver Monks. Focusing in on Paladin for a second, it seems to just be a jack of all trades and master of none. Literally, master of none. We've jokingly said that it is the budget version of Holy Priest because it can pretty much fill the healer slot in any comp and be okay, but the problem is that it's never really really the best healer for any single comp. Why play RM Palo when you can play RMP? Why play DK Demo with a Holy Paladin when a Druid or Priest is probably a better option? Look, we like class diversity and we're not suggesting Holy Paladin's bad, but rather it just doesn't seem to have anything exceptional about it and appears to be waiting in the shadows for its big brother Holy Priest to get some nerfs. Mistweaver Monk is kind of a wild card as well. Last update, we put Monks in the S tier because we saw a lot of potential. Unfortunately, we are moving them back down half a tier to join Resto Shamans and Disc Priests. Once again, the biggest elephant in the room is that Holy Priests are so good that many healers have simply migrated away from their mains to pick up an Alt Priest that winds up being better than their main class simply due to how forgiving it truly is. Mistweaver Monks started this expansion really slow, but we still think it has a lot of room to grow. With some more adjustments, it could easily solidify itself as a top tier. We thought it might do well if the meta shifted over to more wizard cleaves, but that hasn't seemed to happen quite yet. And with that, we have our healer meta for the end of the season. Overall, healer balance is really good. Well, except for Holy Priest, of course. If tomorrow the entire Holy Priest spec was deleted from the game, we would probably have the most balanced healer meta of all time. The biggest problem right now is that each healer is either too specialized or spread too thin, whereas Holy Priests are just gods of everything they touch. But we want to know what you think of this meta. Does anything stand out to you? Do you think Unholy DKs are the best melees? Are Demo Warlocks better than Fire Mages? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you're wanting to stay ahead of the meta, head over to skillcap.com. There you will find over 600 class guides and a thousand arena commentaries. Together, that's an average of 24 hours of instructional videos per class. And for only $4.99 a month, that is massive value. If that wasn't enough, we offer money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while actively using our website. And with special members only access to our Discord, you can get on demand help from pro players. So what are you waiting for? Join a community of over half a million lifetime users at skillcap.com discount link below all right everyone that wraps it up just a reminder we try and balance the opinions of multiple rank one and professional players when making these tier lists and that obviously means there's some disagreement in any case though we hope you found this as a useful meta guide as always we want to thank you all for watching see you soon